What's going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today, what trades am I currently involved with here in the end of July, as well as talking about Tesla stock, talking about what to expect from some analysts here, some predictions about what their earnings could be, and taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs. That's what we're going to be doing, guys, in today's video. So if you enjoyed this video, guys, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and join our Strive Smart Facebook and Discord groups. All of those are linked down below in the description box. So without further ado, guys, let's just get right into it. What did the S&P do today? It closed on a very strong, solid green note, up $20 today, up $20 and 44 cents to be exact, up nearly 0.7%, 0.68% to be exact. Very, very good there. The Dow Jones Industrial Average almost up the exact point percentage point as the S&P. It was up 0.65%, up $177 here at the close. And the NASDAQ right now, it's actually uh, down $33, down about 0.42%. But mind you, this is the future. So if we go a bit closer here, or even if I pull it up on my phone very quickly, that's kind of odd because it seems like the NASDAQ did close green today. It closed green up 47 points here, according to Yahoo Finance up 0.6%, but then it dropped very aggressively. So I'm thinking a stock reported earnings that um, ended up fluctuating the NASDAQ very, very heavily. And if you guys know, let me know down below in the comment section what ended up causing this drop. I actually don't know. I probably should know what caused this drop, but I guess it just slipped um, my personal news radar. So anyway, um, that's what the NASDAQ did, the S&P, the Dow. Everything was green today, but you guys can see, obviously, again, the NASDAQ is falling right now. And I'm actually interested. What the heck dropped this? Was it Apple? Uh, no, Apple seems like it fell. Amazon... Anyway, it seems like all of tech took a hit. Let me know what you guys think. Again, if you guys have any info on this, I would love to know. So let's go back to the S&P. Let's break down some technicals here. And yesterday, you guys talked, uh, heard me talk about how we were still technically downtrending below that 50 simple moving average resistance on this 20-day, one-hour chart. And today, since we gapped up, since we broke out of that 50 SMA resistance, now we're seeing a breakout bullish pattern on on the S&P 500 and we're also it also seems like we're breaking $3,005 which if we successfully gap up above that tomorrow this could be one step closer to all-time highs and that's going to be the full break of this downwards trending pattern because not only did we uh, break that 50 SMA right we also broke that lower high pattern that the S&P was on remember we were talking about 3017 was the high this was a lower high at about 3,005, and this would have been another lower high if we were to get rejected by the 50 SMA, but since we broke above it, we broke that lower high pattern, and again, especially if we break 3,005, that is a complete break of that pattern, and in my opinion, especially if we get these rate cuts here in the next eight days, I think the meeting's on the 30th or the 31st, the Federal Reserve meeting, you know, I think that will, uh, that will probably push us up to all-time high here because we're very close so I could see us getting another all-time high at this point maybe even tomorrow or the next day if the markets continue this breakout that we're currently seeing right now and if we go to a bit of a further perspective on the 184 hour chart you guys can see that 29.95 was a resistance. We broke out of that today. It seems like we are maintaining above it since we did close about 10 points above it. That's a very good sign. And now, again, we talked about 3,005, but if we break 3,005, the next resistance here on a macro level on this 180, pretty much the six-month chart, is going to be that all-time high, which, again, is why I'm saying that, you know, the all-time high, I personally think we can definitely hit 
hit another one um, this week, right? Maybe 3,020, whatever it may be. I do think we'll be able to get it. So that head and shoulders pattern, I might as well mention it again. That one is kind of, um, you know, uh, it kind of broke to be honest, right? This left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder, it would have completed if we dumped, right? I rem remember I was talking about that yesterday, but since we didn't dump, right, we didn't get that big sell off, we popped it broke the pattern pretty much, right? So I figured I'd mention that, uh, mention that just to update you all on that aspect of things. So um, uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, just like the S&P on the 20-day one-hour chart, we were making those lower highs. High here at about 27,400. The next high at about 27,300. Next high, um, which would have been the high, you know, if we were to get rejected and pushed down, was going to be at around 27,250. And for this downtrend, to have been continued, you know, we would have had to push to a lower low here and break this support at about 27,100 that I was talking about in yesterday's video, right? And since we didn't do that, right, we went the opposite way. We broke out of that 50 SMA. Now we're breaking out of the 27,300 level. You know, that downtrend, it's broken. This is a very bullish move in the Dow Jones. And I suspect that we could potentially be hitting all time highs here tomorrow, guys. We're literally off 50 points right now exactly almost 50 points uh pretty much here you guys can see it and if we gap up we could be at all-time highs right then and there uh you know pretty much and we see here the nasdaq futures they are down a bit so we don't know i don't know honestly if this is going to hold um in the red heading into tomorrow but it's definitely something to keep an eye on because if they do turn green you know we could be hitting an all-time high as soon as tomorrow in the dow jones and industrial average and if we're stretching it over here to the um, six month chart we zoom in a bit you can clearly see the next resistance is that all-time high, so there's really not much to touch upon um, in terms of that resistance. I guess another thing you can mention is that we broke out of that wedge to the upside here, this little wedge that I have drawn, and that's also a very bullish move for the Dow Jones. So I guess that's pretty much it in terms of that. Um, you know, Hopping over here to the NQ, you can see the NQ is on the brink of hitting an all-time high as well, right? Very close to $8,000. We took that dip. We kind of got ourselves in this wedge, just like the Dow Jones, but now we got that break out of the 50 SMA and out of that wedge this morning as the NASDAQ did gap up. But again, we just talked about a couple of minutes ago how the NASDAQ right now is dumping, and I'm not too sure, again, exactly why that is happening. But at this point, you know, if I kind of re uh, redraw this, let me just remove this one and remove... Um, this one, you guys can see, okay, this trend line is looking good. Let me remove this one as well. But if, you know, I draw one from up here, actually, let me get that a bit closer. If I draw one like this, I guess you can tell that the NASDAQ is the only one out of the three at this point that's technically still in this lower high pattern. 8,000 was the high. The next one was around 79.70, 79.75. And right now we're a bit below that. We're at about 79.50, which constitutes as another lower high. So tomorrow I would be watching for a potential breakout here. If we break this trend that I just drew, this trend line that I just drew out for you guys, that's going to be very very bullish. We could expect all-time highs from there, but let's say whatever caused this dump, again, I don't know what ended up happening, but whatever caused this dump, and I, it, it seems like it is holding the support right now, so this may happen, uh, this may continue into tomorrow, but let's say whatever caused this dump ends up dumping us further. At that point, you know, on the 20-day one hour, that would be confirming the drop and we could be in route to a lower low, which would just be the continuation of this little downtrend that we've been on here over the past couple of days. So that's what I'm really watching at this point. Which way are we going to go? Are we getting rejected by this, heading to the support of this channel, this little uh, you know uh, uptrend pattern here? Are we going down here to retest it, or are we breaking out? That's pretty much what I'm watching. So that is it for the market update today, guys. Let me know down below in the comments section. 
section. What do you think about this? I would love to know. What are your thoughts? Are we going higher in the markets? Are we selling off? What are your thoughts? I would absolutely love to know. I love talking to you guys every single day in the comments section. So let's talk about what I ended up doing today. And honestly, guys, today I didn't do any day trading. I simply enjoyed a nice little green pump in my swing trade, which was FDX. And you may be asking me, Stas, did you sell your swing trade? I actually didn't sell it, guys. I held on to my FedEx shares. I'm still in with my initial position that I took yesterday, about a 15, 20% of my gold stake position is what I took yesterday. And I continue, I, I plan on continue holding this and adding it as, F, uh, as FedEx FDX continues to confirm its uptrend here. Again, I'm typically not trading against the trend. You know, I'm not averaging down most of the time if my stock is selling off, but I do like buying on little dips as it pops up as it's in the uptrend, right? And right now, FedEx is clearly in the uptrend. So if you guys watched my video yesterday, you guys know I entered... Oh my goodness, I'm forgetting exactly where I entered now, but I think I entered right around the 160, was it like 168.80, I believe? I think so, around 168.80, 169 is when I entered into the position after we had that huge red candlestick sell-off and we confirmed that support at around 169. That's when I ended up getting in, and I do admit, and I admitted it in yesterday's video, that this was a bit of an early entry on FedEx, but I'm comfortable with it because, again, I scale into my positions, into my swing trades. I like going in with 10, 15, 20% up front. So I'm not too heavy into it. And let's say it went the wrong way. Let's say it ended up selling off and it hit my 2% and it hit my 2% stop loss. I wouldn't be losing as much money as if I put all my money in, right? That's kind of the idea of scaling in. So now I'm up around almost three ish percent on that position and it is getting a bit overbought. But now I'm getting to the point where I would like to see a pullback and a potential re-entry here or not a re-entry, a point in time where I can add more money um, into FedEx because again I plan on swing trading this I mentioned it in yesterday's video up to around 185 that's the current goal right now so I want to add more you know as we continue to push up here and if we go to the 20 day one hour an ideal spot which honestly guys it seems like we're already holding this old resistance as a new support at about 172.50 but an ideal spot to get in would be if we pulled back maybe retested this as a support you know that could be another spot to get in with more money maybe 173 but let's say we gap up tomorrow maybe 174 could also be an entry point it really does depend on what way we're moving in the morning that's going to fluctuate my um, decisions there but that's pretty much it guys as of now you know, I'm just in FedEx. I plan on adding more. And you guys can see we did confirm the bounce on the old resistance as a new support today in the middle of the day. Ideally, I should have added money here. I'll be completely honest with you guys. I should have added money here because we bounced on the 50 SMA as well. This would have been the perfect place to add more money, but I missed it. I'm not perfect. I'm not a trading algorithm, right? I'm a human. I missed the entry point, but tomorrow I'm hoping I can get um, another position in this overall position in here. Um, I hope I could buy more shares tomorrow. But anyway, that's it. Let me know what you guys did today in terms of your trading down below in the comments section. I would love to know. And let's talk about Tesla very quick, guys, because I know a lot of you probably know at this point, Tesla stock, they are reporting earnings tomorrow, guys. TSLA is Tesla stock's ticker symbol. And this is a stock that when they report earnings, I feel like everybody in the stock market is listening. They're watching. The stock fluctuates 10%, 15% in the upwards direction or the downwards direction. So I always love covering on the channel, talking about what the earnings might be and my personal opinion on the overall stock. And that's what we're doing right now because the time has come. Tesla earnings, guys. So I'm pulling up my notes right now. 
And I did some research, right? So analysts polled by Thompson Reuters expect a revenue of $6.4 billion for quarter two, which is an amazing jump from $4.5 billion for quarter one. And I'm sure a lot of you guys remember quarter one, abysmal earnings for Tesla. They did very bad, very poorly on delivery. And I'm assuming the $6.4 billion revenue projection, it's a lot higher from the $4.5 billion um, from the previous quarter because they did deliver a record number of cars this previous quarter as you all know by now and since that actually happened you know the sentiment in Tesla stock has just been ridiculous very bullish and you guys can see that in the trend here analysts expect revenues to rise 60% on a year over year basis that's extraordinary well 95,000 are extraordinary good rather 95,200 cars were delivered in quarter two with which happens to be a record, again, I just talked about that, which is a rise of, let me tell you guys, 134% year over year. That's extraordinary growth there, guys. And again, that revenue is pretty solid growth as well in terms of 60% if they hit that $6.4 billion. So, Tesla's EPS is actually expected to be a lot better from this previous quarter. Their previous quarter net EPS was negative 2.9. And this quarter, analysts expect negative $0.43, which is actually a ridiculous increase from this previous earnings period, which is very, very good. They're not turning a profit quite yet, but their earnings have increased dramatically well from the previous quarter and analysts I was reading they are expecting a profit from Tesla in the third and fourth quarter so one thing that's a bit worrisome right now about Tesla guys is the amount of deliveries that are coming from model X or not X model 3 81 percent of the deliveries were from Model 3 in the second quarter, leaving Model X and Model S, which are kind of the more expensive, uh, you know, cars that Tesla offer, leaving them with not as much exposure, not as much sales. People are going more for the Tesla Model 3, and that's kind of obvious. That's kind of um, Tesla's plan right now. They do want to expand that. That's the car that they're making, you know, uh, 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 available for the masses because it's a cheaper price uh, compared to the Model X and Model S. But the one thing is the Model 3, it's not as profitable, believe it or not, as the Model X and Model S. So I'm interested in seeing here in the next couple of months and the next couple of quarters, are they going to be able to, you know, increase their sales in the X and the S to maybe bump up some more profits and become profitable quicker, you know, and consistently prof profitable quicker. That is what I'm personally looking at. And honestly, that's really one, what I want to know from this earnings report, right? I want to know about how many deliveries they're going to do for the whole entire year of 2019. Originally, they were projecting, I believe, like 340,000 to 400,000 deliveries. Right now, year to date, they've done 158, which is not on pace with that particular um, projection. So I'm interested in seeing what ends up happening from here with that. So that's kind of the rundown on Tesla stock earnings, what to expect. You know, my personal opinion at this point, guys, is that the overall sentiment in Tesla is changing. These delivery numbers, they shocked Wall Street, they shocked investors, and they sh and it shifted the, the sentiment around the stock from a very bearish one, short sellers everywhere, to one that's like, okay, this could be shifting to the higher side, to the positive side now. But again, I'm sticking to my guns, and I said this a couple of months ago, right? You guys remember this. I was saying for Tesla, the narrative to change, the need to do very well in deliveries which they did right and that started to shift the sentiment and they need to be profitable and consistently profitable and prove it to shareholders prove it to wall street and at all the investors and traders out there and that would be another boost in the stock that in my opinion that could actually get it back to 300 per share so i would love to know what you guys have to think about tesla let me know down below in the comment section as well again i love talking to you guys on a day-to-day -day basis 
prices. So very quick, without this video getting too, too long, let's talk about a couple of stocks that I'm watching right now other than FedEx. FedEx, I'm obviously watching it again. I went over my plan there, but another one is Snapchat, guys. Snapchat today, we talked about this one in yesterday's video. This one ended up playing out exactly to how I called it out and predicted it, although I didn't trade it, guys, because I'm not much of an earnings trader because I don't really like buying before. I like buying after, but you guys can see the pullback and the bounce on the 180 SMA, which has been a support over the past couple of months. That, coupled with a very strong earnings report, ended up popping up the stock immensely, and this proved to be an insane dip buy, so if you were able able to capitalize on that congrats but at this point i'm looking to see if we see a bit of a pullback maybe some profit takers if we start to push down maybe back down to let's say $16, $15.50, maybe $15 flat. This could be an interesting entry point, especially if the RSI gets a bit more healthy. And again, they did report earnings. So let's take a look and see what they did end up reporting. Okay, they, they reported negative negative six cents EPS beats the 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 one the negative one cent or the negative ten cent estimate. Sales at three hundred and eighty eight million beat three hundred and fifty nine million estimate. Okay, that proves why that's a pretty good earnings beat. That proves why the stock is up 10, 12 percent after market hours. So I'm watching that one, guys, for sure. BAC is another one. Banking stocks did quite well today, and you can see BAC broke a key level at about thirty dollars which was an old resistance from back in the middle of march of 2019 now i want to see are we going to settle on top of this support um you know new support now old resistance new support and are we going to fill the gap back up to 31 dollars and if that does end up happening bac offers a nice two maybe one one uh, uh, 1 to 2.5%, roughly around there um, in terms of margin of profit. So BAC, I'm really liking that one. Let's hop to see uh, uh, what's uh, Domino's Pizza doing today. You guys can see Domino's Pizza does seem to be struggling at this point in time. Seems like it is consolidating at around 255 to 257-ish. Uh, so if we do get a pop and a break above 260, that could be a bullish breakout and, and we might fill up to 260. 67 at that point but until we break into 260 guys i'm not looking to touch dominoes but it is maybe settling for a pop here or this could be settling for a dump so we really need to see what direction it does end up picking so those are just a couple of stocks that i'm watching today guys and of course my opinion on tesla i would love to know what your opinions are so if you enjoyed this video feel free to go down below and hit that like button consider subscribing if you do want to see future content for me from trading content investing content stock market content in general personal finance that's what this channel is all about consider subscribing and drop a comment let me know what all your thoughts are right now involving this video the stock market the stocks talked about and of course tesla so i appreciate all you guys watching i'll catch you all in the next video peace out